Hey. Welcome to Survival Lit. Book support one for Survival Lit. We are reading On the Beach by Neil Shute. So far in chapter one, we've learned that they are in Australia, which is why it is warm at Christmas time. They have the exact opposite environment that we do, um, climate-wise, as that goes. Uh, we have met the main character, who is Lieutenant Commander Peter Holmes, his wife Mary, and they have a baby, Jennifer. He volunteers to go aboard the Scorpion, which is a U.S. vessel, and he's going to work on that submarine as the official Australian liaison for that vessel. So Peter is going to go under the command of, uh, excuse me, Commander Dwight Towers. Um, he meets him and likes him and decides to, to invite him home. He had had a conversation with his wife, Mary. And Mary had a very interesting concern. She's like, oh, come on, don't. He's from America. And they can't handle it. And uh, we, as the reader, have not been given enough information to know exactly what she means. But he reassures her, like, oh, no, 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 this guy might be cool, like, we'll bring him home, whatever. So they bring him home, and they invite Moira, their friend over, it's Mo Moira Davidson. She comes on over, and her whole thing, and, and Mary is quite verbal, that Moira is to distract Dwight as much as possible. Show him a good time, give him some drinks, give him some laughs, have some fun, keep it light but don't allow him to dwell on the fact that he has lost his entire family and his country is gone. He might be one of the last Americans alive. Um, which is interesting because we, the reader, have not been given any information as to what happened yet. So we find out that there have been bombs going off all over the Northern Hemisphere. We, we don't know what happened, but they, they clearly state that none of the bombs fell in the Southern Hemisphere. So you'd think the Southern Hemisphere was safe, but they also then proceed to tell you that there are toxic, ga toxic gas clouds slowly creeping down from the Northern Hemisphere. So this problem that was created by these other countries, by these other people, by these other armies, slowly creep down into people who had nothing to do with it. And it might not be fair, but it is. And that's the question that I want to ask you. We have two sets of people in this book. Can you give me the list of the characters that you've met? And I want you to split it into two uh, categories. We're going to have people looking at reality, people burying their heads in the sand. And I want you to write down the characters who are burying their heads in the sand versus the characters who are dealing with reality. I'm going to give you Mary as one of the people who buries her head in the sand. And I'm going to give you an example. Um, she asks, oh, that garden she's always working on. She's like, oh, we should plant some trees here, and we should put some flowers here, and we should have this here. And she's talking about how, oh, yeah, they'll bloom in like in five years. Won't it look great? They will be alive for another eight months if they are lucky. That is how long they are going to live. So I have no idea why you're planting a hibiscus tree. You're not going to be around to see it. And the tree might not even be around to see it. I don't know how toxic gases work, okay? So there you go. We have many people who are absolutely dealing with it, maybe not in the healthiest way. I'm going to say Moira is dealing with it. She's recognizing that the world is going to end. She is not dealing with it well, though. I mean, she is obviously trying to drink herself into not realizing that she has eight months to go. But she is always aware that the world will end. And she's always questioning Mary for doing these things. So we have a nice opposite. It's not like, oh, the girls do this and the boys do this. It's this character does this, this character does that. For the rest, I'd like you to fill in the rest of them. There are also some people who might seem to flip-flop. If you want to put someone in the middle line and draw uh, examples as to how they are you know, either dealing with it or not dealing with it, that's fine, you can do that too. But I'd really like you to try to take a stand and say, I think that Peter is definitely dealing with it or definitely not dealing with it or maybe he's just he's dealing with it but he's placating his wife by pretending like oh yeah sure we'll we'll plant an orange tree and in five years we can make marmalade okay um again and as i said at the beginning of this class and i will say it again because it bears repeating this is a great book i picked it out because it's fiction I don't want you guys worrying about the end of the world okay there is not going to be a zombie apocalypse you don't have to worry, we're all fine. So if, if this book starts to worry you, if you start to read it and you're like, oh my God, ah, I want you to just stop and remind yourself, 
the reality of this book is probably, you know, Smurfs might be more real. So please, please, please don't worry. <laughs>